There is a small word with enormous meaning. Every day, thousands of believers go in search of it. Many claim they do not have enough of it. Some claim they have some of it for some situation and not for others. Many have devised what they regard as the sure way to get it, and in the process are only fleecing people of their money and not the other earthly goods. But it is so crucial that without it, none can God. The teaching of Holy Scripture on this word ought to clear any confusion on the matter, especially among those professing to be Christians, believers in Christ. As we conclude our exploration of Hebrews 10, 19 to 39, we look at this virtue that is the foundation of the lives of believers in Christ. Though unbelievers may be confused, the people of God do not. Indeed, the confusion is needless. And so the needless confusion can be cleared up if only believers listen to the word of God. Therefore, in this discussion, video discussion, we will explore the last section of our text to learn the importance and effects of the game changer that we can persevere in our faith as desired by God. And the title of this video discussion is Here is the ultimate game changer with God. Remember, God is the center of everything. It is what matters to God that should matter to us believers and indeed to all his creatures. And the word of God to guide our discussion, which is the last of the video discussion and is the last four verses of our text, that is Hebrews 13. Hebrews 10, verses 36 39. And I read. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. For my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. For we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering, to the preserving of the soul. And the Lord bless his words in our hearts, saying, Jesus. The background to our story, again, which we started uh, six videos ago, is again that we are looking at Hebrews 10 verses 19 to 39, the place where the practicality of the theory taught in the first portion of the letter to the Hebrew are to be seen, to be applied in the lives of believers. And so, in our first video titled, Drawing Near, The Secrets of the Intimacy with God, we explored the first three verses of our text that is Hebrews 10 verses 19 to 22 and then in the second video do not let go the key to hold, holding fast to your faith we looked at the text of Hebrews <coughs> 10 23 to 25 and in the third video, 
Beware of the dangers of presumptuous sin. We looked at Hebrews 10, 26 to 29. In the fourth video, The Wrath of God and the Power of Grace, we looked at Hebrews 10, 32, 31. And in the fifth video, Outlasting the Storm, Power of Devotion and Perseverance, we looked at Hebrews 10, 32, 5. This is the last, the, the sixth and the final video in our exploration. And this is majorly on the last uh, three verse, uh, verses of our text. That is Hebrews 10, verses 36 to 39. Sorry, the last four verses of our text, Hebrews 36 to 30. And so looking in a bit of detail to the text. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For this connects this to the previous section, that is Hebrews 32. Hebrews 10, 32 to 35. And it gives the reason also for what follows. So, you have need of endurance. Now, speaking to the recipients of this letter, you have need, you have to endure, to persevere. They needed endurance and to not give up because of the prosecution. And suffering they faced so that when you have done the will of God when they have done the will of God they needed the endurance to be able to do the will of God that is the purpose of the endurance if they do not endure they will not be doing the will of God so they would have done the will of God by persevering through the conflict as we read in Hebrews 10, 32-34, and they are urged to continue to, as they are exhausted, do not throw away the confidence. Done the will of God. By doing the will of God, they will be imitating Christ, their Lord, who did the will of his Father, by offering himself as the appropriate sacrifice for sins once for all, and thus obtain sanctification of his Hebrews 10, verse 7, also verses 9 to 10. Obeying the exhortation, we mean they would have done the will of God. Thus, the purpose of the endurance to do the will of God. Those who cannot endure are those who give in, and in giving in, they do not do the will of God. They and that to they succumb to fear or to the dictates of the flesh. So endurance is a mark of those who insist and prevail in doing the will of God. So the will of God is to believe in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent to the world, to save <coughs> whom he has sent to the world to save mankind. John 6 verse 29 and to demonstrate that faith by living daily according to the will of God. Matthew 7, 21-28 James 1, 2, 3 Such faith, such endurance, such belief is demonstrated by living according to the will and purpose of God. It is those who are doing who are demonstrating their faith that you may receive what was promised that you may receive what was promised that is salvation brought by Jesus Christ Hebrews 4 1 also verse 8 Hebrews 6 12 also verse 17 Hebrews 8 6 this is looking forward to the future when all the promises will be ultimately Remember, 
these recipients of this letter were already saved. So they have the promise of salvation presently. Other aspects of salvation, the promises given, will be actualized at the ultimate appearance, at the ultimate road of Christ. These believers should continue to believe, that is, put their trust in Jesus entirely. So they will receive the promise of salvation for them, for themselves. Hebrews 4, 1. Hebrews 6, 12. Hebrews 9, 15. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come, and will not delay. It is still to come, for yet shows that it is still to come. A time extension beyond what was expected. That is, it is not immediate, not immediately now. It is something, something still to be waited for. There is still some time remaining for this to be accomplished. Or to be completed and this is the reason their continuing confidence and endurance are necessary the delay of promises is sometimes a means to test the faith and the endurance of and this is aim of the exhortation to continue to have confidence and to endure and refuse to be wearied by the trying time in a very little while. That is, this, this puts a limit to the time of the accomplishment. It is not endless or forever, but for a little while. Not long again. Hence, not to be, they are not to be afraid. They perceived, the perceived delay will not be of such that will cause them or should cause them weariness or this will be despondence. So comparing the whole situation, we mean that from the time they believed up to the time they are now, the time is really shorter. It's no more as long as when they first believed. He who is coming, the one who is coming, this is a citation of Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. It's also cited elsewhere, for example, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11. There is a specific person who is coming. Will, he will come. This is speaking with assurance and certainty. It is a promise that is, will mandatorily be filled and will not delay, again, reinforcing the certainty of the coming of the one who is coming. So there will be no delay. In other words, what they are counting as delay is nothing on the part of God as delay. Everything is still working out according to the plan or the scheme of God. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But that this is a mark of contrast. On the other hand, my righteous one, the one in accordance with the compelling standards of God, the one who lives or is in accordance with the compelling standards of God, the one who is according who requires or lives according to what God demands. This righteousness is not something the person has earned. This is imputed. This is because of sanctification and because of relationship with Christ. The my righteous one that live by faith. We live by faith. It is faith that pleases God. Hebrews 11. Sorry, Hebrews 11, 6. By faith to believe to the extent of certainty 
as what faith is, to continue to trust in God without wavering, to completely trust in God. These believers were exhorted to have confidence and endurance as a means that will carry them through the trying times. But these traits are not the basis on which constancy and perseverance grow. Rather, faith is the basis from which all this springs and grow, and the nature, efficacy, and power of faith are thus spoken of here in this verse. And if he shrinks back, if he draws back or withdraws, forsakes what he, where he is, that is, if he withdraws from or draws back from doing what is presumed to good, in this case, continue to have faith and trust in God. If the person stops having faith in God, if the person stops having that confidence assurance and continue in faith, my soul has no pleasure in him. My soul will not be pleased with him, and thus we have no pleasure in him. Thus, God will have no pleasure in such a one. Rather, that person will have God the pleasure of God. This is a quotation of Habakkuk 2.4. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving soul. But again connects this to the previous section. It's also again a mark of contrast. So on the other hand, even though some may draw back, we, the writer of this letter, and the recipients of the letter. So the writer puts the recipients on the same footing or at the same level with himself. They belong to the same community of faith. So again, expressing confidence, the faith of the recipients of the letter. We are not of, that is, do not belong to or are not in the group of those who shrink back, those who withdraw or those who draw back. Those who renounce what they previously knew, know about their faith in God and in Christ. To destruction, that is, to destruction or to ruin. Destruction, it is also translated as prediction. The New Testament destruction is often used for everlasting judgment or punishment of wicked unbelievers. Matthew 7.13, Romans 9.20. Philippians 1.28, 1 Timothy 9. Enter through the narrow gate, but the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through Matthew 7.13, that's B95. What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience, Vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. Romans 19 has been applied. In no way alarmed by your opponent, which is a sign of destruction for them, but of salvation for you. And that too, God. Philippians 1 8. The guess is the third Bible. So, for example, one may think of Judas Iscariot, you know, who was also referred to as the son of prediction. John 17, 12. That is, he was headed for prediction, for destruction, for total wrong. But of those who have faith, so we are not of those who draw back to destruction or to ruin, but of those who have faith. Both the writer and the recipients belong to those faith, to the preserving of the soul, to the preserving of the soul. Faith preserves the soul in the sense that 
once a person has put his trust in Christ, that person is delivered already from the wrath of God that will fall upon the ungodly. And so, having faith in Christ is the same as having a soul. Because the wrath of God is going to fall upon the ungodly, upon the faithless, if who are believers who refuse to accept and come to Christ. This contrasts with those who do not have faith, who withdraw to destruction or ruin of their soul. Rather, there are those who have faith that results in the preservation of souls. Preservation from the destruction that is to come at the end of time is a result of their. The essentials for us to learn. Again, we see here severe warning and encouragement. There were warnings in the previous section, Hebrews 10 26 31, and is thereby followed by reassurance and encouragement. Hebrews 10, 32. Remember, we, we were dealing with the fourth warning in Hebrews. So there have been three other warnings before the one in Hebrews 10, 26. So, like avoiding them being wearied or being discouraged, from such severe warnings, they now needed to be encouraged. They needed to be reassured. This is the essence of Hebrews 10, 32 9. These believers might be becoming weak and discouraged that they were going to have to continue to undergo affliction and persecutions endlessly or for a long and indeterminate period. Then the fear of being worn out in the process must really be real in their lives. This is especially important as it is the nature of women to desire rest and peace from sufferings and trials for as long as it is the will of God and to encourage them to receive this temptation there follows citation from Prophet Habakkuk. The Purpose of Endurance What is the purpose of endurance? Or to which end is endurance? What is the endurance of the people of God? Why is the endurance is the people of God so important to them? God. Endurance, the word is variously translated as patience perseverance, and patient endurance. Endurance or patience is the capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances without forsaking one's faith. That is remaining in faith despite adversity as to endure. Endurance is a trait of the new disciple of Jesus Christ. Endurance presumes that the Christian, the Christian life attracts opposition that should be responded to by spiritual. Of most times, this does not talk about physical things. We believers face physical challenges, but the resistance comes from the situation in the heart, and this is where the faith matters. This is where, I mean, why it is constantly, they are constantly told to not forsake the confidence of their faith. It is faith that quenches all the fiery uh, 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 darts of, uh, uh, of suffering and of the enemy, of doubt, and the other thing that the enemy may use to want to entice or tempt believers to. Take God. So such opposition will come from persecution or from the problems of life. The pain and suffering that come from this is viewed with distaste and negativity. But the word of God encourages believers to look beyond the suffering to the blessing 
of successfully overcoming hardship for Christ's sake and enduring to the end. So, the people of God, Israel left Egypt for the promised land. The older generation who left Egypt did not fail. They went into unbelief. Therefore, they failed to reach the promised land and were replaced in the wilderness by the new and younger generation. However, the endurance of patience you hear is that endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 1 3. This is the endurance that is better than pride. Ecclesiastes 7 8. The endurance that demonstrates love. 1 Corinthians 13 4. And the endurance that is evidence of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is walking in the lives of believers. Galatians 5. I hope you understand that. So it's not just any kind of endurance. This only comes to those who belong to the Lord. Because it is in them that the Holy Spirit works. It is them that the Holy Spirit empowers. It is them who have their hearts set on God. And God helps them to grow their faith in Him. Hence, the admonition to all believers. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, laying aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, let us run endurance, the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, Legacy Standard Bible. The believers are to stay in faith, remaining true to God in all situations including during persecution. Thus, doing the will of God, purpose of endurance of the people of God. Those who, will not end, who do not endure will be those who will compromise, will not do the will of God. The period of vulnerability. There is an interval between the promise and its delivery date. Many forget about this. It is true, believers have been saved. There is an interval between the time the promise was made and the time the entire promise, the entire content of the promise, are delivered to the recipient. It is during this interval that do deliver from sin and its power, believers still live in the presence of sin in the world. Many of us forget this. Yes, believers have been saved, but they are still having to live in the presence of the of sin in the world. Yes, they've been delivered from sin. They are no more sinning as they have been, but still, sin is still prevalent in their environment. They can be enticed, they can be tempted. It is also during the interlude that persecution and affliction take place. The believers have been saved, but then they still have to continue to live till they are called home by the Lord, or until Jesus Christ comes, when they will have the final glorification, when, as the word of God says, all the evil things, everything that offends, will be taken out of the kingdom of God. And so it is this interval now, this is the period of grace. It is during this time that enticement and pressures have the potential to cause so much anxiety and fear that believers may be tempted to jettison their faith and return to Judaism or their previous way of life. It is during this interval while we are waiting they will be called home or to for Christ to come back that people may be tempted, may be pressured, to mice, to even denounce their faith. So, this is the period of vulnerability. Believers are vulnerable to temptation. They are vulnerable to the negative impacts of persecution and affliction. Yes, they are vulnerable to attacks of the devil, of the flesh, and of the world. 
So believers should understand that they are vulnerable within the interval, leading to their salvation and the coming of the Lord, when they will finally forever with the Lord. And it is, they are vulnerable because of all that the flesh, world, and the devil will unleash upon them. Yes, in their attempt to derail their journey of faith, to make them denounce God or compromise or in any other way to harm their relationship with God and with fellow believers. Thus, it is during this time of waiting for the Lord's coming that endurance in persisting in faithful obedience is required. Needed. Believers need to hold fast the confession of their hope in Christ without wavering. Who may think the Messiah is delayed or will not come? They may become heightened. You know, <coughs> this may become heightened during persecution affliction where there is, you know, there is such pain and suffering. But the believers were reassured and reassured that despite what their situation and senses might be telling them, the Messiah will come without fail. Are they appointed? The one who is coming is the Messiah. And this is second this refers to the second coming of Christ. And this is the object of the faith of belief. The Savior will soon return as he has promised. John 14, 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I, in my Father's house, are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself. That where I am, there you may. John 14, 1 to 3. That's B94. However unreasonable and improbable it may seem, the Messiah will come at the time appointed by God and will certainly fail. The believers must recognize their vulnerability and remain resolutely, confidently God. Temptation to draw back will. Again, letting you see, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, or I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. That where I am, that, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking with certainty, with confidence that he will come back. Believers ought to believe the report of the word of God. We need not deceive ourselves. The temptation to draw back will. You see, when people are comfortable and they hear of others falling into something, they are usually very quick to, to jump into confusion. Some will claim, oh, if we go. Oh, that one claims to be a Christian. If I were the one, it would never happen to me. We need to be real. Believers in Christ frequently face temptation. Though so temptation is not a sin, falling for a temptation. Persecutions and other adversity can be so severe that believers may succumb, even if just to obtain some respite from pain and suffering. Those who are in danger of being tempted will return to their previous life of after hearing the gospel, especially on earth. We are warned severally in scripture possibility of this. A variety of reasons are often given for and by those who succumb to temptation. 
and backslide from the faith that this may be an indication that such ones did not believe the message and the work of God is one of such reasons. Hebrews 10, 6. Those who thus draw back will thereby be demonstrating their inclination to willfully in it after receiving the knowledge of even apostles. And if the righteous one shrinks back, that is, if he renounces faith in Christ, thus committing apostates, God will have no pleasure. Believers must recognize the real possibility of drawing back, of compromising, of being so wearied that they may despair for their life and take necessary precautions to avoid such a horrible outcome rather than being arrogantly presumed, claiming it can happen to them. Many claim they have grace. Many claim they have all sorts of things and then they live a careless life. Believers ought to be wiser than they. Remember the case of Demas? He was a fellow laborer with Apostle Paul, as we read in Philemon 4. But apparently, later, he left because he loved the world. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. So, believers must be, must be warned that the temptation to draw back is real. As the believers who received this letter were warned, remember, this letter was written to believers. To warn them, it's not that they have done this, it is telling them of the possibility and for them to be aware and to take necessary steps. Remember, as the Bible says, nothing happens to us believers that is not common in other words our experiences so many we want not to be so are the same as those of unbelievers the difference is jesus christ yes jesus christ and the holy spirit are the ones that make the deep difference in the life of the earth and this is the reason why the second coming well for meditation. Remember, these believers who had gone through persecution and afflictions in the past and were about to go through another period of the same and possibly even severer are encouraged to focus on the imminent second coming of the Lord as a motivation to ensure to endure their trials by faith. And so, as we are told, see to it, brothers, that there be, there not be any one of you, an evil or believing heart, that feels that falls away from the living God, but encourage one another, day after day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deepness of Hebrews three. 12 to 13. Again, the issue of not being arrogant, the issue of being humble, not pay, saying that, oh, it is beyond you, it cannot happen to you. Oh, that person fell because the person is weak, oh, but I'm strong. Humility goes a long way to help the believer to live a life that is purposeful and trusting. If they were concerned that the second coming of Christ had not come or occurred, they were to be assured without doubt that in a very little while, he who is coming and will not. The one who is coming is the Messiah. Thus, the second coming of Jesus Christ is the object state of believers. The Savior will soon return, as he has said, John 14, as we have just read. But Habakkuk 2, 4-5, describes the proud who is self-sufficient, 
and does not realize the need for patient error in continuing trusting God. Hence, such ones do not live by faith in God. Those who do not put their faith in God, Jews and Gentiles alike, be rejected and be judged accordingly. Thus, believers are admonished and encouraged to understand that the wait for the that the wait for the end when the Lord will arrive is shorter than the that the second coming is not only certain, but is just around the corner. As they already know, the righteous are required to have faith. Faith results in salvation and the preservation of the soul, that is life. Bringing back will incur the displeasure of God. The displeasure of God will culminate in the final judgment that ends in destruction or ruin. Again, Hebrews 10, 27. And no believer will be found in the company of those who should back for whatever reason. Therefore, the second coming of Christ should be another fuel to their motivation. An earnestly expectant and focusing on the Lord must fuel their endurance against all adversity as they look beyond their present immediate circumstances. And on the important to recognize and to understand the confidence of the being. Both the writer and the recipients are not among those who shrink back to destruction or ruin. Thus, the writer affirms his confidence, the fruitfulness of the faith and commitment of the recipients as believers in Christ. In view of their severe, in view of the severe consequences of willfully continuing to after receiving the knowledge of the truth, or the stubborn, persistent, presumptuous sin or apostasy, these believers were then reassured by, by affirming that is the writer confidently affirmed that they who believe that is the writer. The recipients of the were not among those who will fall away to destruction. The obstinate, habitual sinners or apostates will shrink back from faith in God. They leave because they are not part of the of God. First John. But there are some who will be close to believing and can be pulled out. These are the ones concerning whom believers are instructed. Stay for others, snatching them out of the fire. It is important to understand that affirming the confidence of these believers was not just to make them feel good. For their confidence and trust in God has the, has the sacrifice of Christ as its foundation and it has been tested and found to be. Hence, it is just affirming and encouraging the truth that their confidence is due to the sacrifice of Christ and his high priesthood service in the heavenly sanctuary. Especially alone knowing that their confidence was due to their belief in Christ. This ought to be the case for all true disciples of Christ. Yes, all genuine children of God must have their confidence based upon belonging to Christ and not upon us. The benefits of being in Christ. Yes, there are so many benefits of being in Christ. Believers have numerous benefits for belonging to Christ or, and for being in Christ. We have been exploring Believers in Christ have boldness to enter the Holy of Holies, that is, the very presence of God, by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way. Yes, they have in the heavenly sanctuary a great high priest in the person of the risen Christ over the house of God. Hebrews 10, 
Hence, prayer, hotline of the believer to heaven. You don't need an intermediary. The only mediator in mankind is God. So, whether you are talking about any other person, or you marry pastor or whatever, they are not intermediaries. Yes, there is for corporate prayer. For you, if you are a true child of God, you have a direct access to your heaven. You have direct access to your Lord. And remember, you carry the presence of God, the person of the Holy Spirit. So this is what is being told here. This is a major benefit of being. Remember we are told that when he died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, signifying that the way to God was now open. Every Remember again, Christ is not dead. Is a great high priest for all believers, ministry, sanctuary of God in it. Other is an advocate for all. And so, that's a major benefit. Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, remember you have direct access. Wherever you may be, you have that asset. That is the foundation upon which believer and be a trust confident it is the key to holding a faith yes it is the basis which believers must not go of their faith put another way the key for believers to hold fast to the is the finished work of God. resurrection promise of his Again, remember, the critical work has been done and completed by Christ by being the propitiation for the sins of all believers and remaining the great height of believers, the presence of God, thus keeping open the access to God for all who believe moment by moment. What remains for believers is to walk in reality and they are admonished to Seriously, about other. But then, despite all the goodness of God, there are those who reject the gift of God. Yes, despite the goodness of God, there will be those who will reject Him and His mankind. Isaiah 20 10 tells us this Though the wicked is shown favor, he does not righteous. He deals unjustly in the land of uprightness and does not perceive the majesty of him. Yes, Isaiah 20. So we can then understand why the wicked behave the way they do. Hence they are and we see those who turn away Jesus Christ, Son of God, who has appeared once for all at the end of the ages the way sin by the sacrifice of him again Hebrews 9 6 Hebrews 7 27 Hebrews 9 after receiving the knowledge for such ones there is no longer a sacrifice so believers are warned, for it is impossible. <clears throat> Remember, since Christ has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to the way sin, by the sacrifice of himself, whoever then rejects him has no other sacrifice. Yes, to offer that will be acceptable. And as we are told then, for it is impossible for those who have received, who has once been enlightened, if they shall fall away, renew them again. Yes, to repentance, seeing that they have crucified the Son of 
a second. Hebrews 6, 46. Thus, such ones can only look forward to a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire that will consume the adversary. Hebrews 10, 7. So believers will not partake of the punishment of the Hence, believers must remain focused. Children of God must not allow the fate of those who reject Christ to distract them. So believers may face persecution. They are to stay the course and to not be. The coming of Christ is at hand or imminent. Romans 13. Philippians 4 5, James 5 8, 1 Peter 4. And believers are to encourage one another. Say the commandment. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is all today, so that none of you will be by this mess up. By reading that's again second. Believers can be not allow yourself in the group. Understand the second coming of the Lord is most powerful as well as the most winning for believers. Do you want to receive the commendation? Welcome, faithful and obedient servant. Then, form your life. Dictate of the word of God. To remain resolutely trusting God. In Christ, all believers have been called and a fellowship and love, joy and good. Believers in Christ should love both suffering and service. They should render neither help, isolation, or to fellow believers. Believers should bring themselves things that please their Lord as they see the day drawing near. Things they love will appear. Second Timothy 4 A. And in them, that day of life will. So far off. As Christ said repeated, I come. Revelation 3 is Revelation 7, also verse 12. And those who continue in habitual wayfulness after receiving the knowledge of it may think God has forgotten his promise that Jesus is not in, but they are mistaken, and also true blessing. Thus, believers more. Again, as we encourage, commanded, exalted, believers must draw near with the true full assurance of Yes, believers must hold firm pressure of without waver. Hebrews 10. Believer must consider one another, work or stimulate of and to go. Hebrews 10. Oh. Believers must be aware not forsaking their own creatures together, as is it. Hebrews 10. I encourage you again to go and reread Hebrews 10, verses 10. Exhort. Remember also, these are the results of the entrance into the heavenly city and remaining there as a great high priest for believers in Christ. Believers in Christ are empowered by the Holy Spirit, the will of God, and these are part of the benefit of being. And genuine believers in Christ can have and do 
for they are righteous in the works of God. These are part of the benefit of being in Christ. Thus they are part of the righteous ones who live by faith and, and are not part of those back to destruction. Remember again from all of this the ultimate game change. If you have not arrived at that, you understand the foundation are driving force for this and many more benefits is waiting. Therefore, with God, the ultimate change. With God, the ultimate change. Faith or trust is because I hope you get that. The ultimate game changer, the faith or trust, supposed always irrespective of their. God expects you to it to remain trusting, irrespective of your circumstances. Have you ever occurred to you that in the pages of the script, God never excuses anybody for that. And not say and make it acceptable to God that somebody made you one. You cannot say, Oh, I did it because of this. Or God wants, wants it. You hold him high above all. That, that is what God wants. So remember that. Again, remember. That for the child of God, faith is seen. Okay. Yes, for the child of God, faith is seen. How to live. And confessing. Therefore, deal and grow your faith. Remember again, the ultimate game changer God. Faith. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful that we belong to you. May we never be so full of ourselves that we, we can for your help. Grant that we may know we may knowing the great wonderful thing you have accomplished for us in Christ and the constancy of your presence. That fortified by the knowledge of the truth we have received, even if we are harassed, body and temple, we will be faithful. That we will be contented to stand at whatever pool have placed your presence being and may we never shrink back from continually trusting for your grace we sustain from And we will continually give praise and thanksgiving. Please, if you are not yet a believer in Christ, understand that believers in Christ alone are addressed here thus far. But then God knows. And you can become adopted to the family of God. But then you have to agree with the verdict of God, all mankind. As God says, all have sinned and come short of the God. There is no one who does not, has not. And the wages of sin is death. Now, please understand. No human being is thus endowed. Have by yourself out of the slave market. Sin. 
or God has made provision, even in your simple state. God continues to demonstrate. Wow. Let's read two passages of Romans 5 8. For God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. We understand. Romans 5 8. While we remain sinners, God demonstrated his love. How? He allowed his son to die. Why did he do it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only whoever believes cannot perish or have. So God gave his son because he loves the world that he the world. Now all anybody needs to do to believe in him perish. Again, the opposite to those who do not believe perish and not eternal. So how do we become children of God? Told, if you confess with Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him dead, so confess with God. You believe in your heart that God is dead. Is this so? For the explain, for with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth confesses, resulting in salvation. So, in the heart a person believes, is again telling us the arrow heart. It. And then with the mouth, and the invitation is to all for whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10 And so the Lord is the one calling you. Hear him. I pray you will hear the call of the Lord. Yes, he not post, not give you any excuse anymore. He will arise. Take action. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find for your souls. For my yoke is what in it. Matthew 30. Please do not delay any longer. Remind, remember, I understand a Christless life, a crisis filled her head in the break left. I pray for you. Please, you need to get out of that very quick. Before it is too late, crash it headlong. I pray may the Lord accept you into his as you appropriate. Sacrifice of on the cross. 